Hi everyone, in today's video we are going to talk about Kappa architecture. So as we know in big data world there are two very famous architectures Lambda architecture and Kappa architecture. In previous video we had discussed about Lambda architecture. Let us see a bit of a summary of that. So there will be a lot of input data that we'll be getting. Some data will be coming as batch and some data will be coming as streaming data. Batch layer will process the batch data and speed layer will process streaming data. Output of batch layer and speed layer will be combined and put into serving layer. Our consumers who could be a dashboard or a downstream application, they can consume data from serving layer. They will see a single view in the serving layer. So this is at high level was Lambda architecture. Now Lambda architecture had a lot of issues. Let us talk about them. There was a lot of duplicate code. Since we had two layers, batch layer and speed layer, logic has to be duplicated between batch layer and speed layer. So you will end up duplicating the code. Maintenance of this code is really a big headache. So your development will be slow because you have duplicate code, you're writing code twice. And the maintenance of that code will also be difficult because if you make changes at one place, you have to make changes at other place also. So your testing effort, maintenance effort will increase. Next one is data quality. So whenever you have duplicate code, even though you may have very stringent process to maintain the consistency between these codes, there will be chances that you will end up corrupting your data. Since you will have multiple developers working in your team, they may use different abbreviation, different ways to write the same logic. So that situation creates a lot of problem and creates data quality issues. Since you are maintaining two systems, one is batch system and one is streaming system, right? It will be a big headache to maintain two systems. You have to maintain upgrades and maintain the infra of two completely different systems, batch system and uh, streaming system. So imagine your streaming system is built on Flink and uh, your batch system is built on Spark. In that case, you will end up maintaining two different systems and the kind of skill you will need, kind of investment you have to do will be huge. Now Kappa architecture tries to fix these problems. Kappa architecture is evolution from the Lambda architecture. Let us see, you have a source system. You will have a real-time data processing layer. As soon as the data is available, data will be processed by that layer. Output of that will be put into serving layer and both the batch consumer and real-time consumer will consume data from that serving layer. So in Kappa architecture, we are not maintaining different processing layers for batch data and real-time data. A single layer is processing data from both the sources and there is no separate view for batch consumer and real-time consumer, they are having a single view. In this way, mostly you will have a real-time processing pipeline, which will be implementing the Kappa architecture. This is very simple, but there are also limitations of Kappa architecture. Let's look into that. So if you have an application, if you're building a system which needs a lot of joins, in Kappa architecture, since you're using streaming data, right, it is not advised to build that system on Kappa architecture because your joins will become complex and you will end up into a lot of data issues. In case you need to very frequently reprocess your data, right? You need to redo the work. In those situations, you should prefer to build it in a batch way. You should avoid using real-time processing pipelines because it will be more complicated to implement those kind of things in Kappa architecture. If your use case is of data warehouse, then please don't make it over complicated by using Kappa architecture. Use a good data warehouse system on which you can do a lot of aggregates, a lot of joins. Kappa architecture is usually not recommended for that. The cost of implementing a real-time data pipeline is very high. So imagine you have 100 terabytes of data. In batch system, your cluster will come up. It will process that 100 terabyte of data, write the output, and the cluster will come down. You will free up the resources. In Kappa architecture kind of system, where you have implemented a real-time pipeline, your system has to be up always waiting for the new events to come in. So you will be always consuming the resources. So the amount of resource consumption will be high as compared to batch system. And you will need more skilled developers, more skilled employees to manage the real-time pipeline. Usually the real-time pipelines are more complicated to maintain and more complicated to recover from a failure. So you should also look into the cost aspect when you're deciding a right architecture for your system. Last but not the least, late records. So a lot of time it happens that there was an issue in your upstream. In those situations, you will get your records late. Now, it becomes easier to handle this kind of situations in batch system, but it becomes very tedious if you get some of your data late in a real-time pipeline because the results are already sent to the user, right? 
So you have to reprocess those records. You have to see how different your earlier sent output was as compared to the uh, new records when it has come in. Right. So you have to take that aspect into consideration that how important is handling of late records in your system. I hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel. And if you have any feedback to improve these videos, please share it in comment section. Thank you.